So today we're going to be giving an introduction to cardiovascular disorders. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to start all the way at the beginning with just a, a general review of the cardiovascular system. And, and to do that, I'm going to start a place where people don't typically start. I'm going to start all the way from going to the grocery store. So you go to the grocery store, uh, you pick up some food because you're hungry or you need to eat. Um, and then when you, of course, when you're picking up that food, you're picking up a bunch of healthy stuff, right? You're picking up the fruits and the veggies and all that good stuff that you need um, so that you can live, so that you can thrive and all of that. Now, once you pick that up, you go home, you cook it, maybe you don't cook it, whatever you decide to do, and yes, you eat it. And I had to include this picture because I was looking for a picture of someone eating, and this one was so cute. And I know people would say, oh, that's so sweet. Anyhow, so you, you, you eat that food. What is going to happen with that food? Well, of course, it's going to go down your digestive tract. Um, so you have the food that is entering your mouth, and it's going to go down to your esophagus, um, and then down from your esophagus to your stomach. And once it gets into your stomach, we're going to start to break it down. Your stomach is churning. It's, it's moving. And the muscles are contracting so that you can start breaking apart that food. You're going to have enzymes that are released to start breaking it down even more. Um, and then, of course, from the stomach, it's going to go into your intestines. And one of the things that are happening is as you're breaking down the nutrients, as you're breaking down the proteins and the carbohydrates and all this fun stuff that's happening inside your body, the nutrients get absorbed. And the way they get absorbed is they go into your bloodstream. And then your, your cardiovascular system has the beautiful job of taking those nutrients and circulating them throughout the body. So here we have our heart. And the heart, of course, is going to be beating. And as that heart beats, it's going to send blood um, to really to two different um, places. It's going to send the blood to your lungs and it's going to send the blood to the rest of your body. And those nutrients that you ate, those nutrients that got absorbed into the cardiovascular system, into the bloodstream, are going to then circulate through the body. It's not just going to circulate the, um, the nutrients, but there's also one other important thing that it's going to circulate, and that is oxygen. As I'm saying it, you guys are thinking it along with me. It's going to circulate oxygen because in order for uh, you to get energy, in order for chemical reactions to happen, certain chemical reactions to happen inside your cells, you need to have oxygen to make that energy in the form of energy. ATP, of course, adenosine triphosphate. That is, that's the energy currency of the body. And in order for that to happen, you need to have that oxygen that's circulating. All right, so let's, let's do a review of the path that the blood is traveling um, through the heart and then how it gets to, through the rest of the body. Okay, so the blood that's coming back from the body it's going to come via these two great vessels here. So uh, we have this one. Let's do it in blue right here. And we have this one right here. And those are your superior and inferior vena cava. Okay, so superior. I'm just going to put S and I for superior and inferior. The one on the top is your superior. The one on the bottom is your inferior. And when the blood comes into the superior and inferior vena cava from the rest of the body, that blood is going to enter your right atrium. Okay, so the blood comes from the body, enters your right atrium. It's gonna then, when this right, when the atria contracts, the blood is gonna go from the right atrium to your right ventricles. I'm going to put RV. And you'll notice that it's going through this valve. And that valve is going to be your atrio, atrio ventricular valve. 
Okay, so that's going to be your right atrioventricular valve. It's called atrioventricular because it's between the atrium and the ventricle. So your right atrioventricular valve. From there, when the ventricles contract, that blood is going to leave your right ventricle and go into your pulmonary arteries. Now, when you hear the word pulmonary, you're thinking it's going to your lungs, right? So these are your, over here and over here, that would be your pulmonary arteries. Um, and actually, this first part is called your pulmonary trunk. It's a trunk that branches off into your two arteries, your left and right pulmonary arteries, and that's going to your lungs. If you look over here, you're seeing that happening here. So it's coming up uh, from your right ventricle and going through these pulmonary arteries to go to your lungs. Once it goes to your lungs, what is it going to get from your lungs? It's going to pick up some oxygen. That oxygen is a key component. That oxygen is needed for that energy, for cellular respiration to happen, the chemical reactions that are happening inside the cell so that you can generate ATP, which is that energy. Okay, so from your pulmonary arteries, it's going to the lungs, it's picking up that oxygen, and then it is coming back and let's do that in blue since it's in red, it's going to come back via your pulmonary veins. Pulmonary, pulmonary veins. So it's coming back via your pulmonary veins and it's going to your left ventricle and from your left, I mean left atrium, <laughs> sorry. Uh, let's change that into an A. Sure, you're going to believe that that's an A. And then from your left atrium, it's going to go into your left ventricle. And then from your left ventricle, when that contracts, it is going to go through, it's going to come out here and go into your aorta. And from your aorta, it's going to be pumped out to the body. So we have blood that came in on the right side it came in without oxygen, it's getting pumped to the lungs, it's gonna pick up oxygen, and then it's gonna get back to your um, left side, and then from there, now we know that it has that oxygen, it can then pump, it be pumped through the rest of the body. So just a few more terms here. Of course, these valves here would be your um, left, so I'm just gonna put LT for left, um, atrioventricular valve. Um, and uh, this valve here where it's leaving to go to the pulmonary trunk and then the pulmonary arteries, um, that is going to be, I'm going to draw an arrow. i got a bunch of arrows going all over the place, um, but that is going to be your pulmonary, pulmonary valve. And the one where it's going into the aorta, that, of course, is going to be I'm not going to write it here because I'm running out of space. That is going to be your aortic valve. Um, a few other names that you might hear. The atrioventricular valves. Um, on the right side, we can call this one the tricuspid valve. I should have done that in red. Um, and on this side, we're going to call this the bicuspid or mitral valve. So bicuspid or mitral. On the right side, it is tricuspid. Okay. And then some more terms. This is just, you know, nomenclature. I want you to know these names. I want you to get used to them. The reason this is called tricuspid is because you actually have three of these cusps. You're only seeing two because this is a, a cut through the heart, but there are actually three of these. And on this side, we have two of them. And then uh, the pulmonary and aortic valves, another name for those would be your semilunar. Uh, ooh, that's a terrible R. Semilunar valves. You guys are going to have to forgive me for this terrible handwriting. Um, but you get the content. You get the point. That's what matters. That's the important part. All right, so let's continue on from there. Now, we spoke about the fact that the, 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 the right side of the heart, that is going to be pumping the blood to the lungs, right? 
and I want to get a picture of how that's happening. So here we have our lungs. You have your lungs, you have your, your bronchi, your trachea and your bronchi that are going to your lungs. And of course, in here, what's happening is you're breathing in. When you take that deep breath or a shallow breath, whatever breath you take, you have air that's coming in and that air is going to have oxygen. And as we look at the little uh, branches of the bronchi and the little segments of the lungs, we're going to see that we're going to have these little structures that we call alveoli. So I'm going to write here, alveoli. Okay, so these little sacs that you see here, those are called alveoli. And the important thing is that, yes, we said that the blood was leaving the right side of the heart and going to the lungs, and there are going to be a bunch of branching of those arteries. Eventually, you're going to see that we have this blue vessel that's coming in here, and eventually we're going to get all these little capillaries. And those capillaries, that is where air is coming into the lungs, it's coming into these alveoli, and the oxygen is going into those capillaries. So you're seeing here, um, this is showing you blue because it's deoxygenated, it doesn't have any oxygen in it, but once it gets to the alveoli and you're breathing in oxygen is in those alveoli, you're gonna get a respiratory exchange, oxygen going into the blood supply, and then cardio. Um, carbon dioxide coming from the blood supply into your lungs, into the alveoli, and you breathe that out. So there's exchange that's happening right here that makes it so that when the blood comes back to your heart on the left side, now we have oxygen. All right, hope you guys are still following me. This should be a review or, you know, if you're just getting into the cardiovascular system, this might be a little new for you, but I hope you got um, kind of a good overview. Now, there's something else that we have to mention when we're talking about this, especially as we're going into talking about disorders. And that is what is happening um, once the blood is leaving the heart and it's going to the rest of the body. Um, we're going to have arteries and I'm going to draw this over here. So we have, uh, let's say we have, uh, let's do that in red. We have arteries that are coming down. The arteries that are coming down are then going to give off these little tiny branches. And those little tiny branches are your capillaries. Okay, so I'm, I'm doing this very raw. And I'm doing it red because... The, this is coming away from your heart. It's oxygenated. Now let's do the other half in blue. The capillaries are going to continue on. And as the capillaries continue on, they're going to go to your little um, venules and then to your veins. And by the time they reach over here, they are deoxygenated. So we're going to give some um, terms here. Um, here we have an, and let's do that in red artery on one end on the other end we have oh man i just messed it up oh what's going on here <laughs> sorry about that uh let's go back to where we were okay quick drawing this one is not going to be as neat even though the other one wasn't neat um it's going to be really rough okay coming off on this side you get the point, what's going on there, and now we, okay, so let's let's try that again. Here we have our artery, over here we have our vein, um, here we have an arteriole, and here, it's like a tiny ar artery, right? And here we have a venule, okay? And then all of this in between here, that would be our capillaries. All right, so when the blood is leaving the heart, it is going to go to your arteries. From the arteries, it's going to your arterioles. From the arterioles, it's going to your capillaries. From your capillaries, it's going to your venules. And from your venules, it's going to the vein. And the main thing that I want you to notice here is that it's going from red to blue. And the reason it's going from red to blue is because as the capillaries are circulating through all of the tissues, the capillaries are giving up, the, the blood is giving up 
oxygen. It's giving oxygen to the tissues. And that's what we're illustrating here. So here we have one capillary. We're taking all of this stuff here. We have one capillary. Just for simplification, we're going to have um, blood. You can see the red blood cells circulating. And the key thing here, I'm not going to talk too much about hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure now. I'll get into that in a later, um, a later one of these sessions. The key thing is that oxygen is being deposited. We have O2, which is oxygen, that is being deposited or delivered to the tissues. All right. And then, of course, we're going to have waste that is coming back into the blood supply, into the capillaries, so like carbon dioxide. Um, so we're delivering the good stuff. We're delivering oxygen. We're delivering nutrients. We're delivering, so some of that would be like glucose um, because the cells need it. The cells need it for energy. Um, and we're getting rid of waste. We're getting rid of carbon dioxide, okay? Now, some fascinating things that are that's happening here. When you look at this capillary, okay, you're just seeing one. And you're seeing, okay, a bunch of blood cells. But capillaries can be so small that here is one capillary. And here is a red blood cell. At some points, it's so small that the, the red blood cells are basically going through like a single file. That's how small these capillaries are. However, tissue, all the cells in the body need, need to be very close to the blood supply. So if this is one red blood cell, I want to let you know that every cell in the body is within two red blood cell distances away from a capillary. All right, so we think about these as if they're individual capillaries that are going through. But in, in reality, you have a ton of these capillaries permeating all throughout the tissues. And they're so intimately involved with the tissues that every cell is within two blood cell diameters. The, 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 the size of one blood cell, every cell in the body is within two of those distances from a capillary. Why? Because you need to get that oxygen. You need to get that nutrients to the cells. Cells are metabolically active. A lot of processes happening inside of them, and you need to have, um, you need to be close enough to the blood supply that you can get that exchange happening. Okay, so that's a review of the circulatory system. The question then becomes, what happens when things don't function? the way they are supposed to function. What happens when one of these arteries, or or um, oh, I guess I could um, uh, skip to this now. What happens when one of these arteries get an occlusion? So something is blocking the flow of blood in those arteries. What happens when an individual has high blood pressure? And actually going back here, let's say an individual has high blood pressure. Okay, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit first. Um, the blood pressure, the pressure that's in the, the capillaries and in the circulatory system, in the blood vessels, that is forcing stuff out. All right, it's forcing the oxygen out. It's forcing the nutrients out. Um, it's also, and this is the big thing that it's forcing out in terms of force, because a lot of the other stuff is just going along concentration gradients. It's going to be forcing fluid out. So I'm going to have H2O going into the tissues. But I'm not only going to have H2O going into the tissues, I'm going to have H2O coming from the tissues and back into your capillaries. So you have a mix of water leaving and water coming back in. I hope you guys aren't hearing my, my son is crying in the other room. Oh man. Anyhow, sorry. I, I get I got distracted by that. So the blood pressure is forcing water out, and then you're gonna have water also coming back in. What's gonna happen if the blood pressure is really high? If an individual has hypertension? Well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get more water leaving than you have water coming in. So if you have more water leaving than water coming in, what's going to be the problem? What's going to be the situation? The situation is you're going to get water build up in the tissues. And that is called edema. 
okay? So water accumulation in the tissues, you're going to get edema. That's what we're talking about there, okay? So high blood pressure causing more water to be pushed out, and if more water is pushed out, water is going to accumulate in the tissues, and that leads to edema, that leads to swelling, basically, um, that will happen in the, in the tissues. Now, what happens in the case where there's swelling in the tissues, if there's water accumulation in the tissues, what's the big deal? What, why is that such a problem? Okay, so you have more water. What's the big deal? Well, I'll tell you what's the big deal. Okay, we have edema, water accumulation. Remember I told you that all of the cells in the body are very close to your capillaries. They're very intimately involved within two cell diameters away from a capillary. Uh, that's how far each cell in the body is. But if you have a bunch of water now accumulating, that is going to mess up with that balance. It's going to cause the, the cells to be a little farther away from the capillaries. And if it's farther away from the capillaries, you're not going to get as much of the nutrient exchange, oxygen delivery, and that will compromise the tissue. Okay, does that make sense? You have a, a greater distance. Um, you have a farther distance for um, stuff to travel via diffusion. And with that, that can cause dysfunction in the tissues. So that's one general problem that you can have with um, the circulatory system. Um, in, in response to high blood pressure, you can get uh, accumulation of fluid in the tissues. And with that, if you're not getting the nutrients in the tissues as you should, that can lead to other complications. Now, going back to this picture that we have, um, where we had um, something that's blocking the capillaries or an artery or something of that sort. The problem here, of course, what is that going to do to the blood supply? That's going to reduce the blood supply. And anytime you reduce the blood supply um, to tissues, that makes the, the tissues susceptible to injury. All right, so let's throw some terms out there. First term is going to be ischemia. And ischemia is basically a reduction in blood supply. And in this case, it's a reduction in blood supply because um, you have an occlusion, something that is blocking the flow of blood to a specific area. And in this case, we're looking at some of the cor coronary arteries, the arteries that are actually supplying blood and nutrients and oxygen to the heart muscle itself so that the heart muscle can get the energy that it needs in order to contract. It can get the nutrient, the glucose, and other substances that it needs um, so that those cells can live, they can thrive, and they can do what they need to do. Now, if the blood supply is reduced enough you lead to this type of condition here. It's showing it to you that it's a little darker, illustrating the fact that the tissue is actually dying. If you don't get food, you're going to die. If the tissues don't get the nutrients that they need, they're going to die or they potentially can die. And that is called an infarction. Okay, so that is basically tissue death. All right. And another name for the death of tissue would be necrosis. This is actually cell death. The cells are dying. And because the cells are dying, the tissues are, the tissues are made of cells. Um, so you get tissue death and that is an infarction. All right. So what, so issue here is Okay, we have um, blood that's uh, circulating through the heart going to the body, and part of that going to the body is, is these um, coronary arteries that we have that's supplying blood to the heart muscle itself. And if this gets occluded, an individual has really high cholesterol, cholesterol accumulates in the vessels, um, there's hardening of the arteries, and there's occlusion in this case. Uh, so we're not getting blood past this point. This tissue can die. 
And once that happens, then that causes complications with the way the heart is contracting. The heart is not able to do its job and the tissue can die. And one of, one of the things that we see with this is that individuals have to go in for bypass surgery. So if the occlusion is right here in this point, we're going to have to artificially go in and do surgery, remove a vessel from one place um, uh, and one of the one of the vessels that are used often for this would be your one of the saphenous veins. Uh, we remove that and we construct an artificial connection between the aorta and a little beyond where that occlusion is because then that restores blood supply. All right, so this is a coronary artery bypass. An individual goes through bypass surgery. This is what is happening. And the main goal here is since this is blocked, since this um, vessel is da damaged or occluded, we need to have an alternate route to get to those muscle cells, and we're going to artificially um, artificially do this bypass graft so that we can get blood there. So that's a basic introduction to um, cardiovascular disorders. And um, I hope that makes sense. I want to go into much more detail in, in future um, presentations and in future um, of the, in, in some of the tutoring sessions we're going to do in the future. Uh, but I wanted to, before we dive deep into those things, I wanted to give a general introduction. So I hope you got value from that. That is it for the presentation.